Let's talk for a second about sleep, food intake, weight gain, all that kind of good stuff. And part of the reason I wanted to ask about this is because it seems, this is based on a comment that you had sent to me a few days ago about, and maybe you can tell me how to pronounce this, endocannabinoids. Am I saying that correctly? Cannabinoids? Yeah, yeah, you are. How do you say this? What's the proper pronunciation on this? Endocannabinoids. There we go. On endocannabinoids. Because I'm wondering if this somehow ties into the earlier conversation we were having about THC. Maybe not. Maybe it does. But certainly people who have smoked a lot of weed, which is not me, but will be from, or for that matter, have had enough edibles, will be familiar with the munchies. <laughs> <laughs> Very consistent, very consistent for a lot of folks who, who might dance with the wacky tobacco on occasion. So could you introduce this in any way that makes sense to you, just in terms of, of how sleep relates to food intake, relates to weight gain, sleep and food timing, all of that jazz? Because the endocannabinoids or changes in endocannabinoids caused by sleep loss seem to increase hunger, food intake, and thus weight gain it makes me wonder like why would that be the case (laughs) why is that i have observed as someone who's had a lot of sleep trouble that i become ravenous or at least much more compelled to overeat when i don't sleep it's striking and i've certainly noticed that too when i sort of travel if i'm you know going back home to the uk to england and my sleep is usually always rough with that i definitely notice the change in my appetite and the evidence is really very strong now that when sleep gets short, unfortunately, it will lead to a waistline that can expand. <laughs> and the the early evidence came on to at obesity diplomat. It's a very nice way to put yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, my Twitter <laughs> handle is changing by the minute here, and then at some point there will just simply be hashtag cancel culture sleep diplomat, which is kind of yeah. But anyway, so they, the early evidence looked at- It takes a village, internet. Let's make his dreams come true. All right. Sorry, go ahead. The world will be a better place without me, I'm sure. So, oh, stop so it. there were two appetite regulating hormones. One was called leptin, one was called ghrelin. And leptin, by the way, is a hormone that says to your brain, okay, don't eat it. We think of it almost like the satiety signal that makes you, when you've had food, it makes you feel satisfied by your food. And so you don't want to eat more. And then ghrelin, on the other hand, it does the opposite. It is the, I want to eat more hormone. It increases your yeah. appetite. Ghrelin, G stands for go eat the cookies. Yeah, right. exactly. <laughs> sort of G for my stomach is growling and I desperately want to eat more. <laughs> and what they found was that when you limit people to, let's say just four to five hours of sleep a night for several nights, you see a dastardly change in those two appetite hormones. Firstly, what they found was that leptin, the don't eat, the I'm sort of satisfied with my meal satiety signal, that dropped by about 18%. If that wasn't bad enough, levels of ghrelin, which is the hunger hormone, that increased by 28%. So in some ways, it's almost like physiological double jeopardy that you're getting punished twice for the same crime of not sleeping. Once by a loss of the signal that says, don't eat, you're full with your food, you lose that signal. And then if that wasn't bad enough, you ramp up your ghrelin signal, which is I'm hungry. Hunger levels would increase by around about 24 to 25%, depending on the study. So that was sort of the emerging evidence on the appetite regulating hormones. And by the way, that doesn't necessarily lead to a consistent change in eating more of every type of food. The unfortunate thing is that the class of food that you start to increase your greatest desire, it's not just that you want to eat more, it's the things that you want to eat more of are the things that are more obesogenic. So these are more carbohydrate rich foods, simple sugary foods, ice cream, sort of sweets, etc. And also they found an increase in your preference for eating salty snacks, which can put you towards a path of greater hypertension. So so that was the evidence at the basic appetite regulating hormone level. But then the more recent data came out, and you're right, that all of us, even if we're not smoking the 
the wacky tobacco, as you described. All of us have our own cannabinoids that we release inside of our brain and our bodies. We have naturally occurring cannabinoids in our brain, and they're called the endocannabinoids, meaning that they come from inside of us, endo. And you're absolutely right that when you give people exogenous cannabinoids like THC, it makes them hungry. You get the munchies. But what they found was that when you sleep deprived individuals, this has got nothing to do with THC or cannabis or smoking weed, you increased the amount of these cannabinoids within the, the brain and within individuals. Mm. And so all of a sudden you start to see perhaps it's not just these leptin and ghrelin that are changing to conspire to increase your hunger and your waistline, but it's also that these endocannabinoids are increasing. And you can then start to ask, well, you know, why, what, why would that be the case? How can we explain those things? Currently, we, we don't quite know. One hypothesis is that the only time when you see other species deprive themselves of sleep, because human beings in truth are probably the only species that will deliberately deprive <laughs> themselves of sleep for no apparent good reason, but animals will do it occasionally. And the most common occurrence is when they're under conditions of starvation. And so here, under those conditions, the brain releases a weight-promoting chemical called orexin. And the reason is because the brain has figured out I'm under conditions of starvation. It must mean that my ability to forage for food in my standard perimeter during the time that I'm awake is not yielding enough food. So I need to push myself to be awake longer to forage in a wider perimeter and therefore to find and solve this sort of caloric deficit. So one possibility is that because you are deprived of sleep, you're sort of getting this, this signal of, let me ramp up my hunger even more. Let me drive up my motivation to go and search for food because otherwise I'm going to be in a mission critical kind of break glass in case of emergency situation. But we don't truly understand why these, these hormonal patterns go awry. We certainly know that you will increase your intake of food. We then went on to discover that it's not just about what changes in your endocannabinoids or in your hormones, because in fact, the choices that you make for your foods are controlled by your brain. That's the central dominating decision pivot point for here. Mm -hmm. So we took a group of individuals and we deprived them of sleep. And then we gave them a full night of sleep. And it was a counterbalance study where they both go through both full sleep and without sleep. And the next day we placed them inside an MRI scanner and we started to show them different images of food that range from really unhealthy foods, sort of the pizza and donuts and ice cream, all the way up to really healthy, different types of foods. And they had to rate the desire that they had for those individual foods. And we also did something a little bit dastardly to make it more ecologically valid. We told them, and we did do this, that one of those items that they said that they found desirable, we would then serve them when they came out of the MRI scanner and they had to politely please eat that food. So it sort of just forced them to make sure that they're making the choices <laughs> correctly. Not What we found is that the brain, you started to rate these obesogenic foods as much more desirable. And the reason was that the control regions of the brain, once again, in the prefrontal cortex were shut down, whereas more hedonic drive centers within the brain, dopaminergic centers, and also the amygdala, which is also controlling hedonic food desires, those ramped up in terms of their activity. And that's a profile that we typically see in patients who are suffering from obesity. It's this profile of what we would call a brain state of hedonic eating that you shift over into just going after desirous foods, unhealthy foods. So it was a two-part equation, changes downstairs in the body and then changes upstairs within the brain. There have been since some studies looking at dieting without sleep, which I think is probably some really fascinating data, but let me just pause there for a second.